I've been looking at the play to earn gaming charts all week long, giving scores to different games based on where they rank in the charts so that I can bring you guys the five hottest play to earn NFT games of the week for January 2022. I'm excited for it. The top game voted for on my Twitter. I will do a deeper dive. This is just going to be an overview to give you guys some of my initial thoughts. Let's get started. Hello, Kamusta, hola, everybody. This is Luke with Luke Plays to Earn, giving you guys the top five hottest NFT games of the week starting week one of January 2022. But before I reveal those, I just want to say a shout out to our amazing sponsor, Zen Sports, who is uh, killing it in the play to earn gaming space, making some amazing tournaments. But ultimately, they are also a crypto and fiat betting app for uh, sports and esports and they remove all the middlemen. It's peer-to-peer -peer betting, so it's a better, fairer system for everyone involved. So check out Zen Sports, and thank you for partnering with us for this video. Number five play to earn game of the week, Kingdom Carnage. Our number five game on this list is Kingdom Carnage for its great rankings that it's had across the playtoearn.net website all week long. This is popping off a little bit on social media here. Essentially, it's just a card battler game. It almost reminds me of something a little bit. Uh, I've never played Clash Royale, but I've seen pl people play it. And you're just putting out your, your cards, your monsters into different lanes. And then these lanes are attacking each other back and forth. You can do campaigns, you can do PvP. And of course, it's a play to earn game. So you're earning NFTs and, you know, doing whatever you want with them, selling them, buying them, renting them out. And this is on the engine blockchain. Now you can play this game pretty much anywhere, browser, Android, Steam, iOS, Abyss, uh, which is really interesting because I thought Steam said that they weren't gonna allow play to earn games, so I don't know how that happened or did they change their mind, maybe I just didn't hear, but uh, you can play this game mobile or on desktop. Now again, I can't buy up every project and jump into every game, especially trying to keep track of all the hundreds of games that are coming out, uh, but I did, I was able to play this one and jump in a little bit because there is a free campaign mode. So if you want to try it out, you can go ahead. Honestly, uh, while there is some cool things about this game as far as the strategy, when I played it for at least a little bit, I wasn't too impressed. This seems more like a game to me that I would play on my browser as you know a kid or a teenager in the early 2000s. And it just... You know, nothing screams out to me that it's an amazing game. It's got, you know, okay art, but again, uh, just nothing that's that impressive to me. Uh, so the fact that it's, you know, peaking on all these charts, I, I think it's because it's a game that you can earn uh, your free packs if you want to go play through the campaign. You can get through, uh, and I think get at least two free packs of NFTs. The idea of the strategy, the three different lanes and being able to attack with different ranged and... Uh, different monsters with armor, melee, magic, all that stuff uh, is a little bit appealing, but again, nothing that stood out to me like a crazy amount. So you can see they have a lot of cards out, uh, a lot of bright colors, a little bit hurting my eyes here, uh, but some of them going for cheaper, just a couple, you know, 0.02 engine, some of them for extreme 99 engine at a time, which is quite crazy. You can also go ahead and just buy some packs if you don't want to earn them and you want to get more quicker. You can see here the cheapest pack you can get for $5 or essentially two engine, or you can get uh, more better cards uh, with the uncommon pack at $7.50 or a rare pack for $10. Creating an account was pretty dang simple and getting to play is pretty easy to set up. So if you want to go try the campaign, it won't cost you anything. You just have to put in your email and you can at least try to see if you like the game or not. Again, this one isn't one that super interests me, but again, there's not a lot of free to play free to earn games so if you're hurting for funds maybe this is one you can jump into and who knows where it could go one day it's already topping some of the play to earn.net charts so that's a good sign for it now we can put our ranger up in here to do even more damage there you go there's one damage there's the second and look at that we beat the campaign we should earn a card here, and there you go, a little taste of Kingdom Carnage. Number four, hottest play to earn game of the week, DeFi Kingdoms. Our fourth hottest game of the week is going to be DeFi Kingdoms, and I know some of you guys have already been asking me about this game. Uh, what I've seen so far is 
pretty cool and encouraging. It's just kind of a fun way to do DeFi and introduce people to the uh, finance world of the blockchain, often referred to as DeFi. And then there's, you know, different characters that you can play within the game, earn some heroes, uh, stake your liquidity pools, go, you know, get into the bank system with your jewels. Right now, this game is currently the number one on the Harmony blockchain, which is pretty cool. I haven't heard much about the Harmony blockchain, but it seems like one of those low gas fees as well, which is super nice for gaming. You can see here, they've already launched their token staking, liquidity pools, all of that. They're bringing out more heroes and quests, building up kingdoms and lands, buildings, equipment, all that is to come. And then the battle system, PVE and PVP. Now again, I haven't bought into this game yet. I don't have any of the one token from Harmony because uh, I, I can't play in every game. But again, if you want to vote on Twitter and this becomes the top game, I'll do a little bit of a deeper dive. But essentially right now in the game, from what I understand, you can go in the marketplace and buy heroes. There is the bank, which is just staking your tokens to earn interest. Uh, there's places where you can add liquidity pool and get APR. That's where a lot of people are like, oh, I'm earning hundreds of percent APR in this game. It's crazy. I think that's part of the reason it's blowing up. Uh, there is uh, a system where you can form new heroes with your heroes and almost do, it's not breeding, it's summoning. Because <laughs> um, uh, breeding with, uh, you know, in this kingdom would be a little bit weird to be, a, you know, be like the Sims, I guess. <laughs> but uh, you can summon new heroes through a certain system of, of using the wishing well and um, bringing this to the portal and all of that here. Uh, so there's different things you can do. There's professions where you can essentially stake your NFTs and they'll go do their fishing, mining, all of that stuff. Almost like a, a RuneScape feel where you're building up your skills over time. Uh, the one bummer though that I did read about is that the heroes do have stamina. So it's not like you can just keep running them over and over. You're going to have to let them recharge, uh, which isn't a thing that I love about video games and play to earn, but it makes sense so that they're trying not to flood the market, I'm sure, with their token. So to start this game, they say you just need some one Harmony token, and they say even one is good enough with all the cheap gas prices on this blockchain, which would only cost you about 30 cents. But unfortunately, the token price itself of the jewel has already skyrocketed, and I wasn't able to get into the marketplace because I don't have any of the one Harmony token, but watching someone else's YouTube video in the last uh, couple days, it looked like uh, some of the heroes were selling for about 30 jewels, which if you're gonna go buy a hero for that right now with the token price pumped up to 20 bucks, you're talking about $600 for one hero. So for Krills, the small investors like you and me, we are not gonna get into this game that uh, for the heroes are <laughs> maybe at whale prices right now. Uh, you know, maybe minnow prices, I don't know. Uh, so that's the one thing I'm hesitating about the game, even though it sounds like they have some cool features. You can see within last month, it's already pretty much 4 x from there. And in this crypto market where we're kind of feeling like it's a bear market coming, uh, I would be hesitant trying to get into a game that uh, the token price has already pumped up a ton. But of course, you can still get into the game and you know with your one harmony token buy up some jewel and stake it you can get the apr and try to earn more tokens that way the only problem i see with it is let's say even you're earning 200 percent apr in the game and you're buying up these jewel tokens at 20 dollars well great you might have doubled your token within a year but let's say the price goes down to five dollars then you're still not actually earning <laughs> you actually lost money in that deal if you pull it out there so uh, it's one of those things where I, I think that there's some interesting things in DeFi kingdoms. And again, I will go into it more if you guys vote for it. Uh, but I'm a little bit hesitant with how much it already pumped to really jump into this project myself. But I do like that they're trying to bring DeFi world to gamers and make it fun. And I think it's a cool way to essentially teach people about liquidity pools, staking all of that through gaming, where it's not this complicated exchange and, and something that you have to freak out. You just think of it as playing a video game and you're going to learn about DeFi. So that part of it, I think, is really interesting. And I think that's why it's climbing so high alongside a lot of people that have gotten into this game earlier are earning quite a bit. Number three hottest game of the week is Second Live. And yes, you heard that right. Second Live, not Second Life, which immediately that's what I heard and thought of. I was like, is this just a ripoff of Second Life? 
uh, but it is called Second Live. Essentially what I've learned looking into this game just for a little bit, it seems like it's trying to be the Binance Smart Chain metaverse and already it is backed by Binance Smart Chain and Binance Labs as we speak. So the fact that Binance Smart Chain is highlighting this project itself means uh, pretty significant things for it, even though the game itself and the things I've been looking at, uh, I haven't been too impressed by. I mean, you can go in here and you can buy up your NFT space. You can buy up little pets for, you know, 0.7 BNB. An apartment right now, you're talking about, uh, what is that? You know, a thousand five hundred to two thousand dollars worth of BNB just to buy up a space in this metaverse. So that is a little steep for me, and I can't say I'm too impressed by the art right now. I'm assuming that this is pretty basic and in alphas right now. But uh, one of the things that I think when I see this is just like, am I am I in the Nintendogs metaverse? <laughs> is that is that what we're going for here? So right now, gameplay footage from the Second Life channel. Really, this is a couple months ago, so I don't know if this is updated or not. This is at the BSC Expo, and you can kind of see, yeah, you got your avatar. You're in a you know essentially a metaverse. It kind of looks like maybe I'm playing VR chat or something like that. Again, nothing crazy mind blowing as far as the graphics and look to it. Uh, it looks a little goofy to me, so uh, hopefully they can continue to work on it and make it look a little uh, crisper and a, a little bit nicer. If I'm if I'm going to join it in the metaverse, I want it to be kind of cool and futuristic, not not looking like you know this game was made ten years ago. But maybe that's just me. Maybe people want metaverses that look a little more uh, goofy and silly. So a couple of reasons why I think this game is blowing up. Well, one, you know, the metaverse with Binance Smart Chain that's a pretty big deal. Uh, they also have the bean token that you can earn and you can use your stuff in avatar Eventually, you're going to be able to create spaces and make I think actual things go on in the game and Earn some of the token and then be able to stake that convert that SLT all that stuff uh, They also have some different airdrops and they had a Christmas campaign going on which if you go look at their Twitter I mean, it's crazy. They have 300,000 followers. I don't know how much of those are legit but if you just look through the Twitter, it's like over and over, all you really see is essentially airdrops, giveaways, and partnerships. And so I, I'm wondering how much of their social media presence is really just people trying to earn something for free. Probably a big chunk of it is just about that, which makes me a little hesitant of, okay, how much growth of this is actually uh, legit and people are really interested in the project rather than just trying to earn some free giveaways You can see some of their achievements. So this game has been officially online since August 23rd. They partnered with uh, Binance Smart Chain They did a bunch of giveaways for the Binance Smart Chain first anniversary You see in October players can create personal spaces through NFTs and produce beans so they can stake that and get rewards Using that bean they can mine the SLT token you can play the game and earn bean through the jigsaw puzzle. They did a bunch of Christmas activities and giveaways and partnered with a bunch of other projects in the space. And then they got new avatars back in December 28th. So it's looking a little bit better. So again, it's one of those games when I just look and see the feel of it, I'm kind of like, meh, I don't know about it. But the fact that it's connected to the Binance Smart Chain, which I do use the Binance Smart Chain quite a bit, and they're trying to create the metaverse, maybe the, the sandbox of the Binance Smart Chain, who knows where this project will go. Right now, it's not something that I'm super bullish to jump into, maybe you guys are, but I think it's just one of those projects to keep our eyes out on and see how this thing develops moving forward, what are the else they're gonna do. And apparently they're ready to give away lots of airdrops and do different events. Uh, so if you're interested in earning, maybe this could be a good game to jump into and try to get some of that free stuff. We're heating up here, and at number two, we have the game Krabada. Second hottest game of the week is Krabada, based on its token run on CoinGecko, but also on the new DAP radar list, it's starting to gain a little bit of traction. And this is essentially a idle strategy game. I saw it and I thought, oh, this is kind of like the Axie Infinity of the Avalanche blockchain. That in itself is interesting to me, though, because I haven't been paying it that much attention to the Avalanche blockchain blockchain in the last couple months and the fact they have a game on it now is like oh for play to earn uh, apparently we need to start watching the avalanche blockchain as well so you can use your nfts to mine the token you can actually loot from others and you also have to prevent your mining expedition from being ruined and someone else taking your loot defending your treasure uh, so it's a play to earn game again something i think a little bit like axie i don't actually play axie so it's hard to say uh, but you just pick your team here 
And then you can see if we scroll ahead a little bit here uh, for the battle, they punch each other back and forth, they charge up abilities, and you try to take out their team of three before they kill off of your team. The actual battling part though isn't scheduled to release until March of 2022, so we have some time to go before the PvE campaigns and all of that going on. However, people are already earning tokens through staking and mining in this game, especially the TUS token, which has already been uh, pumping this last week, making it one of the hotter games. There is a prototype battle though. If you wanna go try the battle, you can go download the demos and try it out yourself. Now, the big problem to me, especially if you follow my channel, because like me, you're a krill, you're a little small investor in this whale world. Well, the cheapest one of these crabs, no joke, is eight, $1,800 worth of their token TUS and you're going to need I believe three of them to battle so you're talking about six grand <laughs> to get in this game and to me uh, while I like the NFTs they look cool those crabs are fun they're goofy I mean we got the banana the strawberry some just great fun ridiculousness in it uh, that's that's kind of exciting to me I like that style for whatever reason uh, but the fact that it's that expensive to get into this game there's not a fat chance I will ever be able to get in this game. I'm sure lots of people got in early on a whitelist or something like that, and they've made a ton of money. But to go buy this on the secondary market right now, uh, that's pretty steep for most everybody. And that kind of makes me just think, why not just go buy into Axie instead? So again, to me, it's one of those projects to watch out and look out for, but it's probably one that we're not going to be able to get in unless there's scholarships or renting maybe one day that will help this project for lower level players or lower investors, I mean. But uh, the fact, again, that it's on the Avalanche blockchain, that for me is just a signal, okay, we need to be watching that blockchain as well. And the number one hottest game of the week, drum roll please, is Sunflower Farmers. Our number one hottest game of the week, of course, is this weird Sunflower Farmer game, which you can see I actually did try this game out because I was watching this thing move up the DAP radar all week long. It was starting off as just one of those hot new games, and then all of a sudden it literally took over on DAP radar Splinterlands, the top play to earn game for daily actor users. Splinterlands still won out for the seven day week, but uh, Sunflower Farmer, uh, took over pretty much every single game on the DAP radar. It's this pretty simple game. You click on plants and then you can plant different ones. They give you this uh, token based on what you're harvesting and then you replant and come back in four hours. So pretty simple game. Uh, before I get into the negatives of it, uh, because uh, we've seen this game rise up and by the time you're watching this video, if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of already tanked way back down as far as the token. Uh, but before we get into that, and I'll have another video coming out about it on Saturday, uh, there are some interesting things that I do want to point out. I think there are some positives here. So one, one thing is, is that this game is open source crafting development, which means right now this game is super basic, but if people actually invested in this game, built it out and helped create it more and more, maybe this is the next stardew valley who knows the other thing that i thought was interesting is that to start the game you have to donate to charity and it's not that much i think it was 0.1 matic or 0.01 matic and so it's kind of cool that they're encouraging people to actually use this and donate to charity rather than uh, hey we're gonna make this game as a creator to make a quick buck and to hype you up about the game and then cash out uh, there also were no pre-sale tokens so you know no pre-mine all that it's just hey earn the token uh, if we want to earn the token as the founders of this game, we can do so as well. Uh, but it doesn't seem like they were intentionally trying to be malicious with this game. It doesn't seem like they're trying to scam people and they're actually trying to create something good and give something to charity, which I think is good. So thumbs up to them about that. The other thing I thought was interesting is that they're actually happening their token supply. So it's kind of like a Bitcoin idea. Uh, eventually, as the supply grows and grows, it starts to happen and then you get less rewards from playing the game. But at the same time, upgrades for the game are less over time as well. So it's like you could still get into the game. You just won't be earning as much as you started uh, before the first or second or third happening. So it's a way that I thought was interesting to try to limit the supply of this token. So not you know, what we're seeing in all these other games is just an inflation of these tokens over and over again with no burning mechanisms, with no way to, you know, uh, 
decrease the supply. It's just like we want to give up all of our gaming tokens and then eventually there's so much supply that the price inevitably goes down or implodes. Now real quickly, let's talk about the negative of this game and the real problem, what we saw happen and why this game I think is already going back down. We can look at the token price in a second is after you do all this farming, you have to save and it looks like it's 25 minutes now. Uh, it used to be 30, so they dropped it even lower. Uh, but you have to, as you farm, you have to save your farm at some point so that it can be updated to the Matic blockchain. So everyone who's playing this game, if you don't save in 30 minutes, well, you just lost all your work. You get your tokens back, uh, but then you can't harvest your plants and earn more. And so the problem is as more and more people started playing this game, even with Matic having really low gas fees, eventually with 300,000 players, flooding this <laughs> Matic chain, the gas fees went up uh, a couple days ago before this game fell off. It was a half uh, or 0.5 Matic, yeah, 0.5 Matic each transaction you want. So I started to get in this game just to try to see like what the heck is going on. It didn't cost me much to get in, so I didn't really lose much. Uh, but the fact is I would try to plant, harvest, and then within the half hour, I had to submit a 0.3 Matic transaction fee just to save my farm. Well, the problem with that is I was probably making in this token SFF less than that, maybe, you know, 0.1 Matic, maybe 0.05 Matic at best. So every time I wanted to play this game and save it to the blockchain and try to earn, I was actually losing money playing this game, which is why if you look at the token, it has gone skyrocket crazy since the beginning of the year peaking at $5 because everyone's saying this game is crazy. It's so cheap to start. We're earning a bunch of money. Everyone jump in, everyone jump in. And as soon as the gas fees started to prevent this game from being playable anymore, new people getting in, this is when the crash started to happen. Boom, boom. And this is literally all within just a few days has dropped back to 60 cents at one point and gone slightly back up to 93 cents. So getting some SFF tokens is now cheaper, but I still don't think it's playable with these manic fees even with the manic fees being so cheap with this many users all at once people are arguing are they bots are they humans who knows for sure either way uh, i think it's just not scalable on the manic network and i'm going to be talking more about what does that mean in tomorrow's video so stay tuned for that part all right so that's going to be it for this friday's top five hottest I have, again, 91 games on this list, and I'm gonna be uploading this into the Discord, which is members only. You can go to the donor box link and join if you'd like to check out some of these other games and the rankings that I've had uh, based on the charts that I've been studying over this last week. But hopefully just passing on these five gives you guys enough ideas of what's happening in the market, some games to look at or to not look at maybe. And uh, hopefully it's just a helpful guide to learn about some other games. I know a lot of people watch me for Splinterlands, but I think it's good to know what else is happening in the play to earn world. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Vote on Twitter for the, your favorite game of the five, and I will then do maybe a deeper investment review into the game to see if it's actually worth it or not. For now, peace out. Pa'alam. Adios, my friends, and I'll see you guys next time.